Gorobus will be the next SSR Plus character coming out in November, so here's everything you need to know about Gori and whether or not he is worth pulling for. So let's get into his attack skills. So for his basic attack, he attacks a single target with 2 hits for 120% of his attack, and for his ultimate attack, he attacks all enemies with 5 hits for 250% of his attack. He also has a 100% chance to inflict specialized corrosion onto all enemies, with the corrosion dealing 120% of his attack as dot damage, and transfers across enemies up to 5 times before disappearing, and at the start of battle he removes the damage reflect buffs from the enemy team, which lasts for the whole battle. This means that damage reflecting units such as Tank Top Master and Carnage will not be able to inflict any damage reflect towards your team when they are hit, which counters the damage reflect mechanic. And if you have his keepsake, you'll unlock his ultra ultimate attack where he'll instead deal 400 of his attack as AoE damage, with the corrosion dealing 180% of his attack, which both of these buffs make his damage very noticeable in battle as his corrosion is so much stronger than deep sea kings due to these dots being able to scale greater than his regular 100% attack stat. So his keepsake is definitely recommended for his high damage output if you do intend on pulling him. Moving along to his passive skills, so for his regular passive, when enemies suffer dot, he deals bonus damage to all enemies by 60% of dot damage. And he causes enemies who are afflicted with specialized corrosion to also be afflicted with adhesion, which makes the enemy unable to launch any type of follow-up attacks and lasts for two rounds. If you manage to limit break him to five stars, then the dot bonus will scale up to 75%, and if you manage to unlock his 5p awakening, the dot bonus will scale up to 80%. For his awakened passive, at the start of battle, he grants himself specialized damage reflect, which when he is hit, he reduces the incoming direct and bonus damage by 50%, while also reflecting 50% of that damage taken back to the attacker. So do note that Gorobas cannot disable another Gorobas's damage reflect, since he can only counter regular damage reflect and not specialized damage reflect. Just like how Flashy is able to counter normal speedsters, but not another flashy. And after any character's action, he will obtain specialized guard by 100% of dot damage inflicted onto the enemies, which adds an extra purple health bar with every star visible representing 100% of his max HP. Now if you manage to unlock his second awakening, then he will also be able to generate specialized guard to the ally in the same column as him, which can help make that ally much more tankier and last for much longer in battle. Moving on to his enhancements, so for his talent page, unlock both pages and upgrade all of the base attack stats, crit bar, Buffs, damage reflect and dot bonus buffs as they should be your top priority. Otherwise, those marked in the blue circles are also good stats to upgrade if you do have the spare talent points to do so. For his damage sigils, you can use sword or piercing sigils, and for his support sigils, you should just use vitality sigils. In regards to his limit break, get him to 5 stars whenever you can as you'll be able to boost his bonus dot damage up to 75%, which is going to make his corrosion even more stronger. And in regards to his awakening, you can get him up to 5p if you do have his keepsake as it does increase his bonus dot damage up to 80%, which isn't as high as an increase like before, but it's still very handy to have if you can do so. Now going through his gear, so for his gear set, the best set for him would be a fiery set, as the all damage boost bonus will make his dot damage very strong. But you can also decide to use a drive set to gain an attack increase, as well as gaining the all damage reduction to help keep him in a battle for much longer, so you get the best of both worlds. Otherwise, you can use a machine set or some orange sets such as using a martial arts, Primal or Gunner set. And with his gears, you would want all four gears to have attack attack bonus in order to maximize the amount of dot damage he can inflict, since his dot scales much higher than Deep Sea King can from their attack stats, so definitely prioritize as much attack as possible on your Gorobas. And for his buff gears, all of them should have attack, with your villain gear having three attack bonus and two flat attack. Now for your Esper gear, you would want to try and prioritize the attack stat if you can to help gain that little more extra attack to make your dot extremely strong. But for the remaining stats you can decide to focus on crit or even the hit stat which increases the chance of inflicting dot debuffs. Now I know that Gorobus already has a 100% to inflict his corrosion unlike deep seeking who can't even reach up to 100% but players are able to increase their resistance stats from sigils, talents from the Saitama features and even from the laboratory if you decide to put in Bangpu. So increasing your hit is a good stat to have in order to guarantee that corrosion to be inflicted onto that enemy. And finally for your dragon gear you can aim for for 3 bonus damage and 2 flat attack, as the bonus damage buff will help both your dot and damage reflect buffs. 
And if you manage to get augmentation from upgrading your dragon gear, they're not very important, so I would avoid them if you can, but a crit augment would be the best for him if you do manage to obtain such an augment. Now to go through some team compositions with Gorobus. So for the higher end lineups, example one should be the most up-to-date meta team with Gorobus and Deep Sea King being in the same column as each other, as they synergize very well with the amount of combo attacks that they can use on top of the cruel and even burst tactics. So that's just a lot of corrosion constantly throughout the entire battle, with Melzagard being sped up by Flashy Flash, and then you have Phoenix Man and Drive Knight as the core, so this is a very well-rounded team. Now, if you really want to, you can swap Gorobas and Melzagard around, as Gorobas does get very critical when it does come to speed, as you want him to inflict as much corrosion as you can. But if you do have someone like Awaken 2 Deep Sea King, then being able to instantly get those combo attacks activated, if you're lucky, up to two times even per round, it would just make a devastating combo, which is why you do want to pair those two up together. But if you do find yourself struggling and you really do need that speed or you can't inflict your corrosion from your Gorobus straight away then you can speed up Gorobus instead. Now if you don't have Drive Knight's core you can still use your Gantrip's core but it just won't be as meta game breaking as with the Drive Knight core but you can still slot him in since you do have a lot of espers on your team with Deep Sea King and even Tank Top Master still can be used even though he isn't really a top priority anymore but he's still good to have since he is still very tanky and those minions can help out with breakthrough if you do manage to go up against Undying Shields, whether it's from Garagantrip's core or from the mastery of the enemies. And if you don't have some of these units and you can replace them with the alternatives on the right hand side, you can even use a stunner like Gale Wind, who can be still very useful in these situations for PvP at the moment, since there isn't really that many strong counters for stun, except with Melzagard being in the game. But if you don't go up against a Melzagard, then Gale Wind can still be usable. So these are what some examples of what some higher end teams may look like. Now moving for the lower end player type of teams, for example one, if you do have Sonic V2, like I said previously, speed is very important on Gorobas, so you still want to use Gorobas as a sped up unit, but you can put Deep Sea King in the same column as him because their combo synergy is absolutely insane with the amount of corrosion you can inflict. And on top of that, since you do have Drive Knight's core, you make sure you use someone like Tank Top Vegan or Goketsu. And then the final slot, that means then you can use whatever unit you choose because you've at least filled up one of every slot. So this can be a very handy team to use in both PvE and PvP. Otherwise, if you don't have someone like Deep Sea King and this is one of your first few SSR Plus units, you can still use Gorobas, but you could even try and pair him up with Butterfly DX who can buff up Corrosion's dot damage. So he can synergize very well with Gorobas, whether you want to use him for PvP or even PvE, because PvE, you can get a lot of high damage numbers with it. This is also not a bad idea to use, but if you do use someone like Oketsu as your shield rate character, just make sure that he is in the middle of your team because he only provides shield rate to those directly next to him, unlike Vegan, who just provides it for the whole team. So you do need to come up with another duelist. Now, thankfully, with the hero backup stick, you could decide on using a duelist like Metal Bat if you do decide to purchase him as a hero backup stick because he is a very solid option that can be used for PvE throughout the entirety of the game. So these are what some examples of what some lower end teams can look like with Gorobas. So going through the main takeaways, from this unit, he is a very strong AoE attacker who is able to deal 400 of his attack to all enemies on top of dealing Dot that deals an additional 180% of his attack, which will be extremely strong in melting through Drive Knight's core. He also counters damage reflectors so you no longer get punished for attacking units such as Tank Top Master or Carnage, so now your whole team can survive that much longer. But do note that he cannot remove the specialized damage reflect so it doesn't work against another Gorobas. Like I've stated a lot in this video, he synergizes very well with Deep Sea King's combo follow-ups as you'll be able to constantly inflict corrosion onto your enemy on top of being paired with the Gruul Tactic, which speed can also be a very important factor to melt through those enemies as fast as possible. And he also does synergize very well with Butterfly DX as he will be able to boost the Dot of Gorobas, which can be useful in PvE game modes to do a lot more damage. Now just keep in mind that the factions of the two are different as Butterfly DX is a hero and not a villain. Also to keep a note that other dot boosters are not able to boost Gorobas' dot since it only takes the strongest boost present, which does include Deep Sea King. However, Deep Sea King does have a higher dot boost up to 86%, so if you do have him to 5p, then you can use him on your team and then Gorobas will be able to deal 86% of the dot bonus. And finally, he is great for PvE as he can help greatly against 6-man teams to melt through their HP, being useful in many game modes such as Nightmares, Conqueror's Challenge, and the 
Crescent Towers. Now to go through a few cons with this character, firstly, his release banner unfortunately got rushed as it was supposed to be Watch Dog Man being released this month. So what this means is that there should only be about four months before the long awaited UR era comes to global, which gives you access to even much stronger espers such as Tatsu. So she might be a unit that you would want to pull for instead of Gorobas. And he also gets countered by Metal Knight as he is able to grant his team immunity to corrosion, which heavily affects both Deep Sea King and Gorobas. So if you would like to focus on PvP, then unfortunately, as stated in my next point, his PvP meta will only last for two months as Metal Knight releases very closely soon after. So do keep that in mind. If you really like PvP, then maybe Metal Knight is probably the better option for you if you want to stay strong in PvP. So should you pull for Gorobas? So for free to play and low spenders, due to his sudden release that was rushed from the initial schedule, I would recommend just skipping him entirely as we are much closer to the UR era than anticipated. So it will be much better to start saving as many black tickets as you can for these very OP units in a few months time. Plus, in terms of PvP, he will only have a meta span of two months as Metal Knight was created to completely counter corrosion and those follow-ups. So the only reason that you would want to pull for Gorobas is if you don't already have Deep Seeking or if you're in desperate need for a strong villain Esper. Otherwise, you should skip and save for the upcoming UR era. For mid spenders, you also don't need to pull him if you already have Deep Seeking or if you intend on pulling someone like your Tatsu in four months time, who's also another dot dealer and an Esper. But if you are in need for a strong villain Esper, then you can pull for him instead. But his keepsake is definitely recommended to pull alongside him if you want to maximize his damage potential. And for high spenders, you definitely do want to get him if you want to be strong for the next two months. And even after, he can still be used as a sub DPS, but he just won't be as effective as the other units. But he can still have damage reflect being very useful for your team. So that's not a bad idea to have if you do decide on pulling someone like Metal Knight because you can still use Gorobas as your damage reflect. Unit. But either way, he will still be a very strong unit to use in PvE and villain related content. However, much like Melzagard, I also wouldn't recommend pulling for his second awakening since it only grants one other ally, the specialized guard that he can generate, which can be useful in making your tanky units that much more tankier. But in my opinion, it's definitely an over investment when you compare it to the upcoming units that have a much stronger second awakening. So just getting Gorobas awakened one with his keepsake is completely fine and saving those evolution stones for future SSR plus characters and even maybe trying to merge those stones for your UR characters. And now I present the predicted SSR plus timeline for global. So where, where do I begin? Watchdog Man got skipped, so we don't know how he will be released since we also have no news with the other unreleased units such as Girigiro and Subterranean King. Now they might decide to release them behind another type of paywall like they did for the reruns of both King and Garo that they did a couple of weeks ago where you needed to pay 2200 funds in order to guarantee just the Awakened Stone and base character as you only get one evolution stone along the way, which is not really worth it and a massive scan in my honest opinion. So I really don't want this crystal ball event to keep reoccurring. Other than those units, uh, we're still unsure whether they will release Pig God, as on the Southeast Asian version, he was released in an event similar to Bakuzan's event, where you're able to get the free evolution stones that you can save for other characters instead. But I'm unsure if they're ever going to release this event and maybe even to compensate for the tragic rushing of this SSR Plus era, which ultimately screws all of us as we miss out on those precious 81 black tickets once again. So yeah, hopefully there will be some compensation within the next four months to make up for this disaster of a game direction, but I guess I'm being way too optimistic if they can't even fix the game after months of complaints to finally take action. Anyways, that wraps up the end of the video. I'd love to give a shout out to all of my YouTube members as you guys are massive contributors in making this type of content possible. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed the video, then please subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell to stay up to date in keeping your One Punch Man account the strongest. Feel free to leave a like and a comment down below and check out my Discord and membership links in the description for if you have any questions and either myself or the community will help answer for you. So anyways, that's all for today and I will catch you all next time.